Hallelujah. Come on and give God praise in this house. Hallelujah. Come on and bless the name of Jesus. The Lord is good. And the Lord is greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is no God like our God. He reigns supreme. He reigns alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. We greet you today in the name of our Savior and our Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank God for this opportunity to be in the house of worship this morning. Thank the Lord for all of you who've uh, joined us uh, via social media. Uh, we pray the blessings of the Lord in your lives on this first Sunday morning in November. We thank the Lord for this opportunity to be together this morning. Amen. Let us turn our attention to the reading of the word of the Lord from the book of Acts chapter 3, beginning at verse number 11. Praise Jesus. Now, as the lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, at the, all the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's, greatly amazed. So when P Peter saw it, he responded to the people, Men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us as though by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One, Holy and, and Holy One and the just, and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God raised from the dead, of which we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him Excuse me. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Yet now, brethren, I know that you did not, I know that you did it in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of all his prophets, that the Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the time of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said to the fathers, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear in all things, whatever he says to you. And it shall be that every soul who will not hear the prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. Yes, and all the prophets from Samuel to those who follow, as many as have spoken, have also foretold these days. You are sons of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying to Abraham, and in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. To you first, God, having raised up his servant Jesus, sent him to bless you and turning away every one of you from your iniquities. Thus ends the reading of the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you for the power of your word. Thank you that when your word goes forth, it will not return to you void. It will accomplish all that you desire. And you will prosper your word in the things that you sent your word to. 
Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your tender mercies. Thank you, God, for the way that you have revealed yourself to us in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us through Jesus Christ, the Holy One, the Anointed One, the Messiah, the Lord, the Savior. And even today, we thank you. We praise you for your goodness, your greatness, your majesty, and your power. And we welcome your presence in our midst today. God, be glorified. Show yourself strong in this place today that your kingdom will be advanced, your name glorified, and your people blessed. We yield to you. We open ourselves up to you. We yield our hearts, our minds, our faculties to you. Use us for your glory in this worship experience. It's in the mighty and the miraculous, the majestic name of Jesus that we pray and we thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's receive our praise and worship ministry now. Let 
Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it
like you, Jesus. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reaches to me. Reaches to me. Come on, in the fullness. In the fullness of your grace. In the power of your name, you lift me up. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless the name of Jesus. Thank God for this day. Thank God for him being our strength. Strength like no other. Yes. Praise the name of Jesus. That strength reaches me and you today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Before we go into the message this morning, I just want to um, make a, just a couple of comments. First of all, we want to welcome, uh, along with the Simon family, little 
Kingston L. Simon, born on Friday, right? Yeah, pray. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Just welcome him into our, our family this, uh, as we gather as a corporate body today. And very exciting event coming up this weekend. Amen. Yeah, come on. The wedding ceremony of Brother Jonathan McFadden and Sister Yvonne Twinkle. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. Amen. And greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. We're excited. Amen. We, we rejoice with Jonathan and Yvonne and their families. Praise the Lord. Amen. And, and lastly... I know that I, I, I said this to our board of directors. I don't know if I said this to the congregation, but if I did, I think it's worth reiterating at this time. When we talked about gathering and we talked about putting protocols and things in place, uh, one of the things that we said was we want people to feel comfortable coming. And if people don't feel comfortable coming to worship, that's fine. Amen? Let's be careful that we don't judge people who don't feel comfortable coming to worship. And be comfortable, be careful with what you say to people. Amen? And if you don't talk about it in private, praise the Lord. You know how people talk about things at home? If you don't talk about it in private, you're less likely to say something to someone that could be offensive. So let's be careful now. Amen. Throughout this, this whole time, I've been trying to be very careful that even with other churches, that are not gathering yet, you know, that I don't judge the church or the pastor. Amen. Amen. Because it's not my place. It's not my place to do that. So I kind of watch my, 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 my words. And, you know, even as we talked about having our uh, community Thanksgiving service, I reminded a ministerial association that there, there were whole denominations that are not meeting yet. So together, they're still meeting online, and we have to be considerate of that and considerate of people. You don't know, you don't walk in another person's shoes, you know, and this thing goes beyond just judging people about this. Sometimes you look at people in their struggles and you can judge them, but you, you never walked in their shoes. You know, there are things about people that you don't know. And so you have to be really, really careful about what you say. And then let's not take offense. Okay, that's the other side of that. You know, let's not take offense. And sometimes people will say things that are out of the way. Be careful that you don't take offense. Amen. Because that's when a root of bitterness will spring up. And that's when people start dividing and going their, their separate ways, you know. Uh, the, more I, the older I get and the more I read the Bible, the wiser I become. God knows what he's talking about. <laughs> We don't. Amen. So let's go into the Word. I don't want to take a long time talking about that. Let's go into the Word. I'm going to read um, Matthew chapter 4 uh, and then ref refer back to Acts chapter 3 for the Word this morning. In Matthew chapter 4 at verse 12, <clears throat> the Word reads, Now when Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he departed to Galilee, and leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is by the sea in the region of Zebulon and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region and region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And again, just to refresh your memory in Acts chapter 3, I'm going to read. I won't read all of it, but it starts in verse number 11, and I'll read um, just down a few verses. I actually want to read verse number nineteen. <laughs> Repent therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing 
may come from the presence of the Lord. Amen. Now, you can go back and read, starting at verse 1, and read the whole chapter and get the whole context of this. But for your hearing, I just want to read that. I want to talk about there's refreshing in the kingdom, the way into it. There's refreshing in the kingdom, semicolon, the way into it, the way into the refreshing. Amen. All right. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the power of your word. Thank you that when your word goes forth, it does not return to you void. It accomplishes all that you desire. Thank you that you prosper your word in the things that you send your word to. So thank you for sending your word to us today. And thank you for what your word will accomplish. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. There's refreshing in the kingdom. The way into it. Okay. Last Sunday, I ministered uh, from the thought, Jesus wants to and can help. Jesus wants to and can help. Seeing that there are so many people that are going through so much right now. And, you know, in this country, as you look around us, you know, as, mu- as tired as we may be of COVID-19, cases are rising all around us. You know, and so we see that regardless of how much we challenge it, and hopefully you're not one of those that are challenging it, it's not going to go away just because you don't like it and just because you're tired of it. It's here, and it's probably here to stay. <clears throat> and at the right time, we'll learn how to deal with it more effectively. Amen. But there's no sense in you going and having these great big parties so that you can have herd immunity. Even, saints, be careful on Thanksgiving. I know you love your family, but please, ma'am, and please, sir, be thankful. It's these little small gatherings of groups of people that you're, that's not in your daily bubble that can, that can cause problems. You know, so let's just use wisdom. Amen. Amen. God is a wise God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I told you, I have not hugged my sisters and my brothers since April, May, sometime or another. But we still love each other. Amen. We still talk to each other. We don't visit every day, but that's why God created Zoom. <laughs> Somebody clap your hands for Zoom and FaceTime. Praise the name of Jesus. And I know everybody's not the same, you know, but sometimes things are mental. You've got to set your mind right, you know, so you can deal with things, you know. Yeah, yeah, anyway, 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 okay. So people are going through a lot. People are dealing with a lot in these times. And it's important for us to know that God is available for us and that he is not just some far-off concept somewhere, a figment of somebody's imagination, that God is real, that he is true, and that he is living, and that he really does um, come into people's lives and minister grace to them, minister grace to us, and helps us deal with whatever it is that we have to go through in our lives. God wants to help us. And most importantly, God can help us deal with whatever it is we go through, whatever it is we're dealing with in our lives. God is available and God can help us. Amen. Now, you have to know him. Amen. And, that's, and it's easy. God will reveal himself to you if you really want to know him. Amen. <clears throat> this week, we've been dealing with this time of refreshing. Amen. And each message in some way, amen, has brought hope and help and encouragement encouragement to us to turn to the Lord and receive his help. Uh, The messages may not necessarily have said God wants to help you, but every message, if if it was a message that dealt with discernment, if it was a message that dealt with looking at yourself in the mirror, if if it was a message that dealt with occupying, amen, and fulfilling the times, uh, if if it was a message that dealt with um, uh, choosing to serve the Lord, all of these messages in some way or another spoke to us about the fact that Uh, God wants to help us and that it is in his help that we get refreshed. Amen. As I was reflecting and praying about uh, a message for the later today, the Lord took my mind to him and his kingdom, his kingdom, and how important it is for us to seek him and his kingdom rule in our lives. Amen. In order for us to receive the help that we need that will make maximum impact in our lives. Mm, Maximum impact. Because that word has been coming up over and over again, maximum impact. There are things that will happen that will make impact, but it's not necessarily maximum impact. Mm. Uh, Yeah, yeah. Um, 
And speaking of that, it is the lack of those deepest, most important needs being met in our lives that brings about feelings of depression, feelings of anxiety, frustration, helplessness, hopelessness, and all of the things that's in that gamut that makes people feel like, that make people feel like, you know, that their lives are not fulfilled, that they're lost, they're out of touch, or what have you. This is the reason that we need refreshing, the kind of refreshing that only comes from the Lord. Amen. And when we begin to really study the scriptures and really understand the scriptures and really grow in the Lord, we begin to see things from a different perspective and not in bits and pieces. We begin to connect the dots. We begin to put the pieces of the puzzle together and we discover that we don't need just a little hype in worship on Sunday morning. We need a daily walk with the Lord. You know, yeah, yeah. We don't need just a little word of encouragement. We don't need a correction on the left side. We need a total correction in order to receive from the Lord the kind of refreshing that he wants to give. So God's refreshing is not a dip in the swimming pool on a hot day. All right? All right? Uh, God's refreshing is not a drink of ice cold lemonade or ice cold uh, sweet tea. Uh, after a long, hot walk in the park in the summer. His refreshing is not a bottle of Gatorade that rebuilds your electrolytes uh, and gives you energy uh, uh, after, they have, after your electrolytes have been depleted. Amen? All of that deals with the natural man. God wants to go deeper. Amen? God wants to refresh us in a way that will restore us and sustain us after we've been through the toughest battles in the spirit realm. Because it is the attacks of the enemy that wears you out. Amen? The devil is set to wear you out. Amen? That's what he's doing. That's why he keeps on coming at you. That's why he see hits you on the right side and on the left side. And when you think things are well, here he comes again with something different. Amen. Because he knows for the saints, he just can't pull you away. But if he can wear you out. And that, that's what happens to a lot of saints. They get worn out. And as you hear people say, I can't take this anymore. Because the devil has been wearing you out. You know, I don't know how I can go through this much longer. Loved ones die and you hear saints say, I don't know how I can live. Hmm? You don't know? How you been living all this time? How you been making it all this time? It's been by God's grace and God's strength. So regardless of what's not in your life, as long as God is there, as long as God is present in the person and power of his spirit, you're going to make it. Do y'all agree? I mean, it's not, just, it's not just a phrase. It's not just something that people are just saying. I mean, there are people who've proven in their lives that they make it by God's grace. I've learned when people ask me and they, on Facebook, how you doing? I say, I'm doing fine by God's grace. I'm not doing fine because I'm, I'm, I, I got a good report from my doctor. It's by God's grace. I'm not, good, I'm not doing fine because I, I, I have an education, you know, and, and I got a good mind. It's by God's grace. Amen. Are you understanding me? Yeah, yeah. So God wants to give us what we need. God wants to be there for us and help us after, in the midst of us, uh, the, the own start of the enemy trying to wear us out. He wants to reach us in those deep places. And, and as I was reflecting on the time of refreshing this week, my mind went to the scripture in Acts chapter 3 because that's been on my mind for about three or four weeks. And as I mulled over that scripture, uh, I, I kept hearing repent and be converted. That's in the King James. Repent and be converted. Then the Holy Spirit reminded me of Acts of Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. From that time, meaning after John had been put in prison, from that time, Jesus began to preach and say, repent, 
For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus is at the beginning of his, of his, of his public ministry began preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In the book of Acts, after the birth of the church, and as, as, as Peter and John are going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, and this man is healed, and they have an opportunity, when the Lord show, gives them this opportunity to, pe- to preach to the people, the, as they explain what has taken place, they say, repent and be converted. Woo. Hmm. Mm. Repent. Everybody say repent. repent. Be converted. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Since the beginning of Jesus' public ministry, he began to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The words at hand means the kingdom of heaven has come. Amen. Jesus is saying, because I am here now, the kingdom has come. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. And then in Acts. Well, let me back up before I jump into Acts. So, then you go past chapter 4, and you begin to see that these people that Jesus is speaking to need refreshing. All right? So, so I won't go back and read it. So, just read. Start reading that chapter 5. And see what Jesus began to say. Blessed. Well, I better go go and read it. (laughs) That's the best thing. And seeing the multitude, he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the people of sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely, for not my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can hear in these words, and you can hear as you pay attention to the ministry of Jesus, right? He focuses on people who need refreshing at the deepest levels. It's not the sick, he says, who need the doctor. It's not the well, excuse me. It is not the well who needs the doctor, it's the sick. Yeah. He was opening a way into everlasting hope and help for those who would come to him in faith. I can help you. I can help you. His message, his way, and this is key. All right? This is key because because when you look at Jesus, he's not just looking at the person Jesus You're looking at his message. You're looking at his way. You're looking at his principles. You're looking at his perspective. Those would would bring refreshing that would alter people's lives completely. So, you can't just accept Jesus without accepting his ways. You can't just accept Jesus without accepting his principles. His teachings. It's an oxymoron. You're a follower of Jesus and you don't do anything he says? What did he say? He said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Why do you say, Lord, Lord, and you don't do what I say? So there's no way to accept Jesus without accepting his teachings, without accepting his ways, without accepting his principles, or without accepting his perspective. And notice that as he was preaching, he didn't say that he had come. He said the kingdom, in in Matthew, he said the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven has come. The kingdom of heaven has come. And the kingdom 
of heaven or the kingdom of God is wherever he ruled in the hearts and the lives of the people. Are you listening? I'm just trying to make some connections for some people. Maybe you already got it. But if you already have it, just say amen anyway. All right? Okay. You know, and, and thinking about all of this, when Jesus was dealing with those people, it's the same way with people today. Okay? Uh, with people in this world today, not everybody, but those of us before we were transformed, you know, Jesus Christ and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is the way into maximum hope and help that we need in our lives. What does faith in the Lord Jesus Christ mean or look like? You say you have faith in Jesus. What does it mean? What does it look like? It's not wishful thinking. It's not obedience to rules even. Okay? It's not having church. I like what Elder Hoskins said in his message. I don't know how people have church. You know, we've developed some terminologies that just are not theological. And we really need to go back to being theologically sound. It would sure help us out. Yeah, it would help us out a whole lot if we were more theologically sound. We just can't have church. You up in there with a whole lot of emotions and hollering and screaming and running around. And if you ever pay attention, stop and think. Stop and think. If I'm just talking just like this, then you're sitting just like that. When I start raising my voice, and in the old church, if I got a tune in the middle of it, it was a sweet tune. You know, I had a melodious voice. And you see, I, I thank the Lord that I can't, I can't modulate, you know. <laughs> I'm either here or I'm there. I don't know how to. You know, but there are preachers that know how to modulate, you know. They, they get to tune it up and they go from one range to the next range to the next range. And people will respond to that. Has nothing to do with the Holy Ghost. Nothing to do. Singers can do the same thing. Beautiful singers. People respond to the sound of your voice. They don't care what you're saying. A whole lot of people. Now, some people pay attention to the words. But, but we get caught up in emotionalism. Has nothing to do with faith. Has nothing to do with the Holy Ghost. Really has nothing to do with anointing. Because Jesus was anointed. And he never tuned up. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah in this place. Amen. I don't know if people have church. I've been guilty of saying that. We had church today. I stopped saying that. Because we have church every time we come together. Amen. Amen. I, I'm in the presence of the Lord when I'm in the shower. Glory to God. And I'm riding in the car by myself. And I, I, I'm, I'm in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I don't need you. Pray. I thank God for you. But I, I, uh, I don't need you. Glory to God. I don't need you to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I don't need you to assist the presence of the Lord. I'm, I, I know how to, as, as, as Ella Brown said, she said she knew how to, how to go through. I know how to enter in. Praise the name of Jesus. I know when I'm going through, glory to God, how to make the connection. Because I'm already connected. Glory to the Lord. And I know what it takes amen to help me shift my way of thinking amen out of that situation off of that circumstance and put my mind back on Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so faith in Jesus is not necessarily emotionalism. We may get emotional but it's not emotionalism. Amen. It, it is not being religious. It's not being religious. It is submitting our wills to the will of of our Heavenly Father and, uh, and allowing Him to rule our lives. Amen. Now, you need, to, you need to look at your life, as I do mine, and, 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 and judge whether I allow the, rule, the Lord to rule or whether you really allow the Lord to rule in your life. When you allow the Lord to rule in your life, you are constantly checking yourself out. Amen. Not that you are obeying the Ten Commandments. All right. But what you're doing is you're checking yourself out to make sure that your life honors the Lord, that your words honor the Lord, amen, that you are embracing the Lord's will and the Lord's ways. I'm getting to the Lord helping us, okay? All right, okay. And along, so, and because Jesus rules, where Jesus rules is where his kingdom is, and, and, and of course, there's another aspect of the kingdom, the future kingdom, amen, and the, the kingdom is now, and the kingdom is not yet, as Trevor alluded to in his message, and maybe one day we'll come back to that, all right? Um, 
So th- there is another aspect of the kingdom uh, and, uh, and our allowing him to rule our lives in the here and now. Um, as we allow him to rule our lives in the here and now, it automatically ushers us into his future kingdom. You can't enter the future kingdom unless you're in the kingdom now. You, do you understand? If he's not ruling now in your heart and in your life, and you die in your sin, there is no interest into the future kingdom of the Lord. You will not reign with him. Okay? You won't do it. There's just no way. You can come to church all year long, 50 years. If you don't allow the Lord to rule in your life, you're not entering into the future kingdom. And with this, the Holy Spirit took me to the book of Acts. And in Acts chapter 3, Peter and John are going to the temple at the hour of prayer. I think it was um, 3 o'clock, the ninth hour. Pay attention to what happens, okay? They meet this man, a certain man, and, you know, and we learned this a long time ago, whether it's, whether, well, well, a certain man, that he, they didn't name the man, so you can put yourself in there. He met Jonathan. They met him at the temple. He met Steve at the temple. Yeah. He met Kathy at the temple gate, okay? Yeah, yeah. A certain man. Being brought to the temple, lame from his mother's womb. You know, and, I, and this just, just dawned on me, lame from his mother's womb. If we want to apply that spiritually, we're born in sin and we're shaped in iniquity. So from, from the time that we are, we're born, we're sinners. We're lame, spiritually lame. All right, all right, all right. All right. So you can put, put anybody's name in there, okay? Um, <clears throat> this man, lame from birth, had never walked lame from birth, has spent all of his life having to be carried from place to place and all of his adult life begging. He'd never experienced the joy of walking on his own. He'd never experienced running and leaping, jumping and playing with other children growing up. Never had the opportunity to play sports, whatever sport they played in that time. Okay, He'd never been able to Play hopscotch. Never climb the tree. No sports at all. Because he was lame from birth. If anyone needed refreshing, this man needed refreshing. And because of Jesus, he received the refreshing. All right. After he's healed, he's holding on to Peter and John, the Bible says, And all of the people in the temple ran to where they were. And Peter seized the opportunity. Pay attention. I'm not talking about right now. Pay attention when you're at Walmart. Pay attention when you own your job. Pay attention when you're at the gas station pumping gas. Just, just, Just be, pay attention. They were paying attention. And what they did was they proclaimed Jesus. They didn't talk too much about the man being healed because what had happened was the Lord had taken this opportunity, uh, to taken this, this uh, given them the opportunity through the healing of this man for them to proclaim Jesus. It was not about Peter and John even. Oh, now I got a healing ministry. <laughs> oh God, I got a healing ministry now. Let me get on the internet. You know, let, let me start having healing services. Let me call a convention, got call a meeting at the convention center. Cause now I've got a healing ministry. And mind you, when I call a convention, the main thing I'm gonna do is take up an offering. These people running behind these prophets and after these prophets and, 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 and some of these people that call themselves apostles. And you got to look at what they're after. Many times they're not, they're not glorifying Jesus. Jesus might be an afterthought because if I, I got to say something about Jesus in order for me to be lifted up. I got to bring Jesus in. If I don't bring Jesus in, folk going to realize that I'm a sham. Ah, uh, everybody's not a sham, but God gives you wisdom and discernment. Listen to discernment. 
Prophetic ministers. Now you got a prophetic conference. You are run to a prophetic conference. Pay your good hard-earned money to buy an airplane ticket or gas in your car to go to a prophetic conference for what? The word of God is prophetic. Study your Bible. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God will speak to you. But the church has been duped because, first of all, we don't want to study. We don't want to submit to pastoral leadership. It's just too hard. Pastor required too much of us. Want us to come to Bible study. Let me get it easy. Let me just go to prophetic conference. Get my word from the Lord because all I need is my word from the Lord. And my, that word going to shift me into my destiny. So you want microwave stuff. That's what you want. You want it to happen just like that. You don't want any process. You don't want any other thing. You want it to happen just like that. Let's bypass all of this sound doctrine and stuff. Just let me get my word from the Lord. Because after all, it is really only about me. I don't care about you. Just let me get my word from the Lord. Let me go pay this, this uh, $500 registration fee at this conference. Buy this plane ticket that cost $1,700. When you could have got in your word and, and, and sold that, that $1,500 into missions, or sold it into your pastor that labors over your soul and watches over your soul. When you get sick, your pastor is going to pray for you. When you die, when you die, your pastor is going to preach your funeral unless your family wants somebody else to come and preach. And you know, I was just thinking about this the other day. Everybody, and I don't mean any harm, I don't want to offend anybody, but I kind of understand why some of these churches now are charging so much for folk who don't come to church, and yet when they die, the family want to bring them to the church and be buried. So you, you ain't paying no, you don't pay any tithes, okay, I don't see you, amen, you don't darken the door of the church, you don't support the ministry any kind of way, yet I'm your pastor, there's something wrong with that picture. Just something wrong with that picture. Every shepherd has contact with his sheep. I don't care if you're not perfect. None of us are perfect. I don't look down on you and judge you because there are flaws in your life. There are flaws in all of our lives. But you have responsibility to the body of Christ. Well, I don't have to say that no more. I said, <laughs> Ooh, this has been on my mind a long time. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for bringing it up and bringing it out. I mean, I love people, but, 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 but you know, you, you got you to gotta, you gotta show some support. I, and it's more than just during this pandemic time. In good times, you don't come. I hope you're watching on Facebook today. Go back and watch this. In good times, you know, and it's not just me, it's every pastor, because this happens across the board. In good times, when things are going well in your life, you don't come. You don't call the pastor up. You don't say, Pastor, how you doing? You get sick and you get mad because the pastor didn't call you. I forgot your number. I didn't know you had a phone number. I, I, you didn't call me and say, Pastor, I got a number. Here's my number. Let me. <laughs> Did you better say trouble in my way. I got to cry sometimes. Jesus will fix it because your pastor can't fix it. Lord, have me. where am I in this mess? <laughs> Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Let me finish this message today. Amen. Lord, help me to stay on this message. Yeah, yeah. They took advantage of that opportunity. And when I read that, I was reminded of what Peter said. 1 Peter 3 and 15. Okay? And, and, and you got to read the context of that. So I won't take a, a lot of time to, to deal with the context. But Peter said, in your heart, sanctify Christ. Revere Christ. All right? A reverence Christ as Lord. And always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks to give the reason for the hope that lies within you. So they were ready. When they got to that, when, when, when the Lord presented that opportunity to them, they were ready. 
Because they revered Christ in their hearts. We can't be in and out of Jesus, or in and out of Christ, and say we're revering him in our hearts. What if an opportunity presents present itself to you when you're out of Christ? You can't be up and down in your faith. All right? While you're down, an opportunity may present itself to you. Are you un- understanding? Revere Christ, reverence Christ, worship Christ always. Not outwardly, it says, but in your being. It means you're sold out to Jesus. And worship is what's on your mind. Reverence in Christ is what's on your mind. So when you're in the line at Walmart paying your money, and that person in front of you is wasting time, and you got to be at an appointment, you're still worshiping the Lord in your heart. So when, 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 when that person begins to get frustrated and doesn't know what to do or just says something about something going on in your heart, your appointment doesn't matter right now. It's an opportunity to minister and proclaim Jesus. You see, we don't know how opportunities are going to come. We don't know when they're going to come. But we have to always be ready to proclaim Jesus. Mm. And this is what the Lord showed me uh, as the way into God's refreshing. Actually, it's the way into God's kingdom because in his kingdom is where his refreshing that makes maximum impact in one's life really is. Without going in this way, whatever you receive will be temporary. So here's what the Lord wanted us to uh, so here the Lord wants us to note Peter's message to the people. And uh, so we're going to start at verse 13. I'm not going to read it all. Let me just not read it because I'm way over time. Okay. No, I'm not. Praise God. You listen to this as long as I preach. Amen. <laughs> the way into God's refreshing, hallelujah, are the refreshing that God has for his people that will make maximum impact in their lives is through Jesus Christ. So what happened when Peter was preaching, he began to show them how they had rejected Jesus. The promised Messiah. The only way to God. The only way into God's kingdom. He showed them how through Abraham and the prophets, Jesus had been prophesied. But they had rejected Jesus. They had crucified Jesus. They were separated from God Even though uh, they didn't realize it, they had rejected the one that God had sent to be the perpetuation for their sins. They had rejected the one who God had sent to give them abundant life. They had rejected the one that God had given them that could satisfy every one of their needs. They had crucified the Lord of glory. Because he did not line up with what they expected in a Messiah. Oh, but isn't that what happens to people today? Think about it. People reject Jesus because he doesn't line up with their way of thinking. His way is different from that of the world. So they reject Jesus. I don't want Jesus because if I have Jesus, if I really have Jesus, there are places I can't go. There are things I can't do. They reject Jesus because his standards are different from the standards of the world. They reject Jesus because he doesn't fit with what people want to do in their lives or with their lives. They reject him. Consequently, Jesus becomes to these people a stumbling block, a rock of offense. And he becomes that point of contention between their way and God's way, and they reject him. Remember the scripture says that Jesus would become a rock of offense, that Jesus would become a stone of stumbling for a lot of people. And that's what we see happening in the world today. They reject Jesus And they say, give us Barabbas. Give me the world. Give me the party life. 
Give me what I want in my life. This is my life. I want to live it my way. So give me my life. Jesus, I don't want you. Your standard is, is too strict. Mm. Let me tell you something. No Jesus, no God. N-O, not K-N-O-W. When you reject Jesus, who's God who came in the flesh to reveal God to us, you've rejected God. You can't have God without having Jesus. So Peter says, repent. That, that word repent there focuses on changing your mind. Changing one's attitude. This attitude that you've had toward Jesus, change it. Repent. Repent. People talk, I'm, I'm turning from my sins and turn 360 degrees. Y'all got it? I am right back where I started from. Change in your attitude. Where is your attitude? In your mind. The way you think. Change your mind about Jesus. Change the way you have been thinking about Jesus, who is the way into the kingdom. If Jesus does not rule in your heart, you are not in the kingdom. Remember the admonition in Peter? Sanctify the Lord Jesus in your heart. Revere the Lord Jesus in your heart. That's where it starts at. Christ. Understanding who is accepting him, worshiping him. Worshiping Christ is not coming in the sanctuary. You can come in the sanctuary and lift up holy hands. You can sing and you can dance and you've never worshiped the Lord. It's where your heart is. You went through the motions. You might have praised him. That's why I always say there's a difference in praise and worship. Anybody can praise the Lord. The rocks can praise him. But it takes worship. It takes a heart relationship to really worship the Lord. I haven't lost you, have I? All right. Peter, Romans 12 and 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the, by the renewing of your mind that you may prove or that you may discern or that you may discover that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. If I want to be refreshed by God, I've got to change my mind. Got to do it. I can't have Christ in the world. You remember the experience on, up, on, up, on, up on the Mount of Transfiguration? And what, what, what Peter, James, and John saw there, Peter, yeah, and on the mountain transfiguration, they saw Moses and Elijah, and they said, let's build a, a tabernacle here. Let's stay. No, no, Jesus said, no, 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 no. There are needs in the valley. But when the vision was, was, was finished, they saw Jesus only. Only Jesus. They didn't see Moses. They didn't see anybody else. So only Jesus. Only Jesus. We got to go back to Jesus. I can't have Jesus and the world. I don't care what my personal inclinations are. I got to bring my life in submission to the will of the Lord. That's Jesus ruling. That's all. That's Jesus ruling. And people can't get that for some reason. Or people don't want that, so they reject Jesus. Whew. Repent and be converted. I'm almost done. Whew, it kind of like those who kind of go hand in hand. But, but what, 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 what Peter is saying is, repent and turn to God. Now, these people thought they were already following God. Just like a lot of people come to church, think they're already following God. A lot of people in this world think they're already following God, but they rejected Jesus. They rejected the anointed one. They rejected the sent one. And Jesus said, there's no other way to the Father except through me. I am the way. There's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. You can't reject Jesus and, and, and have God. Repent and be converted. I thought about conversions. And daily, when I, well not daily, at least weekly when I'm talking to someone in Africa. 
excuse me, unless they're using U.S. dollars, and most of the time, most countries are not using U.S. dollars, and they tell me what something will cost, uh, and they give it to me in that currency, I have to go to the Internet, and I have to pull up a currency converter. I have to change it from their, their, their currency. Or even if they are speaking in French, I have to go to a translator and change it from their language to English or change it from the, say, the pesos, uh, the Latin American pesos to U.S. dollars or the Kenya shilling to U.S. dollars or the, or, the, or, the, or the West African francs to U.S. dollars so that I understand it. Conversion. Change it from the way you normally think. The way of the world. Jesus God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways. For as the heavens are higher than the earth. So are my thoughts and your thoughts and my ways than your ways. No, you don't understand God if you don't give yourself to God. Amen. And submit to his rulership so that he can give you understanding. Turn to God. Turn to God. So that he will wipe away your sins and give you a time of refreshing. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end it here. So, so he says, he says in verse 19, Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that, the, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send Jesus Christ who was preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. All right, all right. Repent. Be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that your sins might be wiped away. Ooh, so that times of refreshing Commentary says that the word times of refreshing doesn't translate in every language. But what it, what, it, what, it actually, what it actually means is that so that you can be strengthened by the Lord. It, it means breathing space, relaxation, relief. Ooh, you feel like you're going under, you need breathing space. You feel like you're drowning, you need to be able to breathe. Oh, you feel tired and worn out. Your, your spirit man needs to be re relaxed. And it's not dealing with the natural man. It's dealing with the spirit man. You need relief in your spirit man. So, so when you repent and you turn to the Lord, really turn to God through faith in Jesus, the Lord gives you breathing space. The Lord gives you relaxation in your spirit man. The Lord gives you relief, amen, in your spirit man. Even though the attacks are going on, even though trouble is around on every hand, the peace of God that passes all understanding keeps your heart and your mind to Christ Jesus our Lord. you find a time of rest in your spirit man. You'll find refreshing. And then you're in a place that when God sends Jesus, whew, you'll be ready to go back with him and to live with him eternally in that day. So the, the, the way into God's refreshing is in his kingdom. All right? And the way into it is to repent and maybe you really understand repentance, but I pray that the Lord has helped us see that, that many times repentance is that we have rejected Jesus because we rejected his ways. And we're living in a way that does not honor him. So we got to change from that. And if I'm going back to Jesus, I got to go back to his ways. I got to go back to his perspectives. I got to go back to his teachings. I have to go back to his principles. That's turning to God. Because I can't have God without having Jesus. And when I turn back, then the Lord refreshes me. Didn't say he take the warfare away. He refreshes me in the midst of the warfare. Didn't say he takes the trouble away. Remember the Christians in the early church were persecuted. But the Lord was with them. How is it that, that you can be preaching 
and people start stoning you to death. And rather than crying and hollering and screaming, you look up and you glorify God. Because you've been refreshed by the Holy Ghost. The little things we go through down here that, 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 that really just, just throws a, a curveball in our lives and makes us lose it, makes us act like we can't live, is nothing compared to being stoned to death for your faith. You just need to turn back to the Lord. Get the perspective right. And sometimes I understand that, you know, giving advice and counsel to people make it seem like sometimes, Pastor, you're just cold and uncaring. It's not that a matter of being cold and uncaring. It's a matter of where you're supposed to be in the Lord. It's a matter of where you're supposed to be in the Lord and helping push you to get to that place. Because there are things that we can't fix. There are things that are going to happen. Warfare is going to happen. In the world, you'll have tribulation. Be of good cheer. Who? Jesus, you mean to tell me I'm having tribulation and you're telling me to be of good cheer? Count it all joy when you fall into diverse trials. Lord, you're telling me to count it joy when, 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 when the doctor says I'm going to die in two weeks. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse trials because the trying of your faith works patience. When patience has had its complete work, a perfect work, you'll be complete, entire, like nothing. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank the Lord for the word today. I pray that you've been blessed. I pray that you've been challenged. I pray that you've been helped. Amen. I've been helped by preaching the word to myself. Praise the Lord. So don't feel like I'm just talking to you. I'm talking to me. I thank the Lord for his word and for the power of his word that challenges me every day. It's surely like eating honey from the honeycombs. His word is sweet. Oh, his word is so sweet. So if you're here today or listening to us online, and you need Jesus. You need to repent. You need to repent. Maybe you've rejected Christ and his ways. And that's the key. Please hear the Lord. Because when you choose to live in sin, you said no to Jesus. When you choose to have a negative attitude and a bad attitude and you can't get along with people, you hate people and you're always gossiping, lying and cheating and stealing. You've rejected the Lord's ways. I'm not saying that we're perfect people. All of us are going to make a mistake sometime. But we're not going to use that as an excuse to make the mistake. Amen? We're not going to use the Lord knows my flesh. He knows my frame and he remembers that I'm dust. No. We're not going to use that as an excuse. We're not going to continue in sin that grace may abound. In this season, in this season, in this season of reflecting, this season of God doing a new thing, in this season, he's just not doing a new thing for people outside the quote-unquote church, he's doing a new thing with us in the church so we can make sure we are in the kingdom. But you don't want to go to hell through the church. That's what the old people meant. They may not have understood all this teaching about kingdom, but that's what they meant. You don't want to join the church and still go to hell. The church is just an agency of the kingdom. The wheat and the tares are in the church. But when, the time, when it's time for the ultimate interest into the kingdom, there's going to be a separation. Where will you be? The Lord calls us to repent. If you're listening online, maybe the Lord has challenged you from this message or through this message. Maybe you've never accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord. We want to give you that opportunity to do so. Maybe you thought Christ and his ways were, were not important 
But the Lord spoke to your heart today because God has revealed himself in Jesus Christ. Jesus' ways and God's ways are the same. Jesus is holy. God is holy. You can't have God without having Jesus. A personal, sold-out relationship for Jesus is the Lord of your life. We want to give you that opportunity, if you've not already done so, to submit, to submit your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a decision of your will. You make the choice. Nobody can force you. The Holy Spirit will not force you. He invites you to come. You make the choice. So I want to pray with you today. If you want to make that choice, pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. I thank you that God sent you to die on the cross for my sin. You shed your blood. You gave your life. You satisfied God's righteous requirement on my behalf. Thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus, because you died for my sins, please come into my life. Live in my being, in my heart. Be my Savior and be my Lord. I surrender to you. And I thank you that you're hearing my prayer as I pray now. Thank you for receiving me as your child. And right now, I claim my salvation that you provided for me. Thank you, Lord. Amen. If you prayed that prayer out of the sincereness of your heart, the Bible says, as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become his sons and his daughters. Okay? He gave you that right because you received Jesus. That means that you are saved. Now, you need to take another step because you don't want to just be out there wandering around. The devil will come and snatch you away. You need to be connected to a group of Bible-believing Christians. We want to help you. Write to us and let us know of the decision that you've made to give your life to Jesus. And we will follow up with you. We will help you in this growth process. And if you don't live around here, help you find the church, wherever you are, that you can connect with. Thank you. If you are a backslider, maybe you're one of those that just turned away and went back. Come back to the Lord. Confess your sin. If we confess our sin, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Confess your sin to the Lord. Ask the Lord to forgive you. Ask the Lord to receive you again. He'll do that. He's waiting on you. Amen. Praise Jesus. So, for those of us in the sanctuary, for those of us who are believers, for those of us who are striving to live for God, let me just pray a prayer of faith with you, touch and agree with you. Father, I thank you for every believer in this house, every believer on this line. I thank you, God, that you know all things. There's nothing hidden from your eyes. Thank you that you love us enough to challenge us in our walk with you. Father, whatever the needs are in this house today, whatever the needs are for those who are listening online, I pray in the name of Jesus that you'll meet the need supply their need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. God, we look to you. I present and I intercede for every believer right now. God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, have your way in our lives. Strengthen us, refresh us, rebuild us, restore us, make us fit to claim your name and proclaim your message. Help us, Lord, that we'll be sensitive to you and always available when you present opportunities to us to proclaim your gospel. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Hallelujah.
Amen. Amen. We're going to take time right now and join together and commune together in Holy Communion. If you don't have your communion, it's on the table outside. We want to give you that opportunity to do so.